put some more clothes on. Oh well. Can you do your microphone, please? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The March 28th, 2022 regular meeting of the Cherry Hills Village Art Commission will now come to order at uh, 10 12. Um, will the clerk please call the roll? Co Chair Schmidt? Here. Co Chair Hall? Here. Commissioner Morrill? Commissioner Smith is absent. Commissioner Anderson is absent. Commissioner Patterson is absent. Commissioner Moore, here. Okay. Um, no uh, audience participation, obviously. So, approval of the uh, of the agenda, the last minutes. Does anybody have any changes or additions or anything to the minutes from the last meeting? No? Okay. Um, hearing none, uh, do we have a motion to approve? Sure, I move to approve the um, minutes from the meeting of February 28th, 2022. Do I have a second? I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Any yes. opposed? Yes. Okay. Oh. oh. All, all in favor? No, none opposed. Oh, okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. I say aye. And any opposed? Okay, that passes, thank you. Okay, and on to the main item. Okay, right up to the John Mead Park Permanent Sculpture Project. Um, let's see, we've got um, we did attend um, myself and Shelby and, and uh, <coughs> Kendall attended the uh, Parks and Trails uh, meeting and um, it was interesting <laughs> to say the least uh, yeah, so um, maybe I'll let you give your take on it. I have some notes, but uh, but give us your feedback. Um, is that on? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I guess I wasn't really sure what the. I mean, I, I think that it was great that we were um, uh, talking to. Um, PTRC and getting their feedback, but I want to remind you guys that this is your purview to select artwork, that we are, we're asking advisory purposes only. Am I correct? That is the that is your purview. So I think we can take um, their feedback, which was apples, oranges, and bananas in various amounts um, and it, as sort of some guidance, but I also think that ultimately the decision is yours on how you want to spend the funding and how you want to raise funding for this. Um, some of the takeaways for me were, um, I, I think that everybody's in favor of something that has some sort of um, relationship to the natural environment. I think that the idea of, um, I, don't, I didn't get the sense that they were all together sold on just some sort of figural piece of a fawn, you know, a fawn or whatever. Um, I did sense that they want you to go bigger, that if this is a project and it's going to be the only project for John Mead Park, uh, they want you to think bigger. And um, everybody mentioned that they li like Charlo and they think that that's the appropriate size and they were, they, um, discuss the possibility of raising more funds for something that has a little more uh, presence. They don't want it to be a small, ticky-tacky sculpture. They want it to have something that you can see from a distance 
something that is visible, something large, and something that hearkens to your natural environment. So th those were the takeaways that I had. Emily probably took great notes from the whole meeting too. Um, I, I, there was, you know, back and forth on which sculpture was their favorite. I, I don't, you know, there was absolutely no consensus on that at all. Um, I think, I think the one thing that they did have consensus for was that the pieces with the um, origami were probably their least favorite um, because they looked small and they're not, you know, they're, they're just, they, they didn't get it. It's a post with a piece of origami on it. I don't think that people really appreciated that. Um, I think that their second favorites were the, um, somebody did not really like the bunnies because again, they were very small and couldn't imagine it in a large format. You can keep scrolling if you want. They liked the crane, couldn't imagine it, like something like this, but in a larger scope, I think they could understand that. And then um, a, a number of people mentioned that they liked the scale of this piece. Um, so I, I guess I probably need to go back and figure out why all four of these were the ones that were selected by you all. Were they mostly just as sort of a range of what could be done? Okay. So these weren't your favorites that you're putting forward. You're mostly just kind of getting a, an idea of what styles they're interested well, I think in. we were trying to find um, <clears throat> pieces that represented different styles, so Got contemporary it. different uh, medias at, from the traditional to the, the really abstracted, so just to get the feedback on that. So I think it could be narrowed down with your sure. input. I would say that probably, and, and Dave, um, feel free to, to um, weigh in, but I think that the, the Josh Wiener piece was the one that had, that exemplified the scale and sort of the feel that they were hoping for, but I think they were saying, go even bigger than this. They, they really wanted to make sure that it was a significant sculpture, maybe by somebody um, of, you know, repute. So I think that they, they um, and there was discussion about fundraising about it. So, and I don't know if you all have discussed the possibility of fundraising for a sculpture. Um, uh, that is, you know, I, I, this is my first sort of foray into the discussion with you all. So, um, I, we didn't talk about the locations at all, um, which is fine. I think that probably when an artist is selected, they should probably have a hand in the selection process and we can, that, that's not, that's not a huge issue. I think they also talked about family friendly things that connect the city to um, other places around the, the around the region. Um, there was uh, one group. Uh, the two women on the board were really interested in more traditional figural bronzes, like you know, kids on benches that are. And I, I think we all sort of went uh, a little bit about that. Um, mostly because I think that I think they were talking about it because they're sort of um, pieces that you see in a lot of mountain towns like Avon and, and ski right. towns and that kind of thing. So I think that that was something that they were wanting to do some sort of piece that connects us to the the rest of the canon of art maybe that's out there. So. Um, as more of a village as opposed to a city kind of thing. So that's what I imputed from the discussion. <laughs> I don't know if it, yeah, that I, actually. Yeah, I think that's uh, that was basically it. I think the the fact that um, they're considering, I mean, or want just basically one piece. Uh, they don't want the whole park cluttered with different pieces and so on. And again, much much larger. And I think maybe before right before you came. I thought we talked about the location just a little bit. Um, yeah, I was late, so you might have been. Yeah, I think we yeah. talked about, and I think everybody was in agreement, at least on, on that area, that location. Yes, so I briefly described it and pulled the map up, and generally there, there wasn't any comment on it, which from PTRC is basically a thumbs up. They'll let you know if they have issues with anything. So, yeah. um, so I think that they're very comfortable having it in one of those three spots around that pond. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Would you refresh my memory where those locations are? Uh, sure. Should be on your screen. Oh, yeah, as your that screen sometimes doesn't work. So it's in purple. Then. Yeah. It's yeah. Inside it's the those, purple. Inside the purple. Three areas right around that uh, upper pond down here. They're they're basically the similar areas that we were thinking of for Emmett Colligan's piece right. to move it and. Um, and I think they wanted to reserve it for something larger. And they want to keep it away from the kids' area so that kids aren't climbing all over it. That was mm -hmm. another 
key point. The one area, the kind of middle area, is the one we were really looking at. Isn't that where the bench is, uh, Emily? And yes. There's a little bit of a mound. There's a little bit more height to, to that area right there. And it's, I think it's far enough away from, I mean, some of the commissioners were, you know, not in agreement with how much art we already have. Um, so uh, yeah really <laughs> yeah so they didn't want anything you know closer to the to the center here to the building so that's why I think that everyone was in agreement to put it further out it was definitely a positive meeting I think they they encouraged um, I, I and I, I was saying to Dave um, and uh, Shenley afterwards that um, I think involving them every step of the way is a wise thing to do so that it doesn't come off as a surprise. Yeah. And then they're like, ah, you know, whatever. But <laughs> I think it's really important also to stress that you are the Arts Commission and it's fine. It's up to you finally. Like if I, I, I think that's your purview. And um, it might be wise also to include um, a couple members of, the, um, of that group in the selection process, it can't hurt. You know, it might be wise to have it, so they can report back to them on peri you know, periodically. So, the more the merrier, I figure. <laughs> right. right. And there were a couple of people who expressed um, a lot of a lot of um, that they were really Im Im impressed by the collection too. So there were you know there were the detractors and then the the people who don't. So if you choose carefully, <laughs> I think you could probably get some good good feedback from them. Yeah, and I um, think we need to look into the fundraising. I mean, they did mention of raising funds, and I, I kind of wanted to say, how do you? Uh, <laughs> well, it sounds like they want to have mind. nothing to do with it, right? It's our our right. project, but it could be a really good way to sell the summer event. Yeah, it's just because that's an important purpose, you know, yeah. and just encourage everybody to come to the annual event and say, you know, the purpose of this is to raise funds for that piece in the park, which I think will be important to everyone. So, right, because we, we did go over the, the finances or, or the amount of money that we had in our accounts uh, that, and for what they're looking for. It'd be I nice to have like another is, 10 grand at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Well, I think, um, I think they, they definitely encourage you to think in terms of scale bigger, but also in terms of the name quality, of the, quality yeah. of the artwork. Yeah. Um, you know, because this is your one chance, you know, to, to get. And I, I think they, they were asking about how much we paid for the piece outside. And, um, you know, obviously there's limited city funds in this. So they were like, go, go. You know, there's a lot of people with a lot of money here. So go and raise money. And then we showed them the list of donors for Charlo. And that was, I, there were hundreds of donors. So we talked about the fact that there could be a little bit of um, donor fatigue, but they were like, no, 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 it's past. That's past. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I get the sense that if you have the right sculpture, you could probably raise funds um, publicly or, um, you know, or would, we should just nail down a budget that you think you can fundraise for and then go from there. Because um, I, I, I guess I don't have a good sense of exactly what funds are dedicated to this project yet, so. Yeah, I think we have the ones, the funds that were held over. So that was at least what, 10? 10,000 10, something. And then yeah. the number was more like 14 because we included some for installation. Yeah, so the, and the amount that's in the budget, including the 10,000 rolled over is 14,180. Okay. Dollars, right? Then there's also the art donation account that you guys have. That's I think around thirty or forty thousand right now. Right. So there's yeah. there's a comfortable amount in that art donation account. And is the idea that the art donation account will go to the sculpture? Is that has that already been dedicated? Because well, that was that was more for our sculpture on loan project, was it not? Or is the it? the original the, the the art donation account has been around since the beginning of the art commission, and it never had a very specific purpose it was more just for public art so it's been used for various sculptures over the years um i think we we've, we've used it a little bit for kendall's funding so it's sort of whatever you guys want it's not really meant for an event okay as much as actual art but it's up to you guys but How that's that? where when people give donations at your events that's the funding account that it goes into okay so do we need to identify this piece first 
before the fundraiser or I need to know I need to know uh, it's going to be hard to identify a piece without knowing kind of what budget you're looking at I, I, yeah, because it could be wildly different. We could be talking before, about thirty thousand, forty thousand, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Find me a Don Ostermiller piece that's humongous and it'll cost five hundred thousand. Right. Uh, you know, I, I guess I'm. I need more guidance from you on um, scale. Are we looking for famous artists that are nationally known? Are we looking for something? I, I guess I just would love to get a little more information from you on how to kind of focus my energy because it's a big, broad world of sculpture out there. So whether or not you want to commission a piece, a brand new piece, I'm assuming that's what you want. And that so we're looking at artists who want to, who work in a certain um, genre and then and saying hey we want to see a proposal from you or something like that um, is what I would recommend but and I, I just want to mention that for the Butterfield piece that fundraising effort was very intense for that commission right. so just to be aware that if you are looking for something at that scale and that price that would be a, a time dedication time and energy dedication for you all yeah for sure well, and she's a internationally known artist, so it's a little easier to raise funds for something that um, is a butterfield that puts you on the map, right? So um, her pieces are in in some of the top museums in the in the country. So, and I think it coordinated with um, having her pieces at the Denver uh, Botanical Gardens, uh -huh, right yeah. around them. So there was so, a piece, an existing piece that yeah. you guys wanted to fundraise for. So, and that's another thing. I know um, Della was talking about. Um, you know, her connections to the New York, um, you know, Pace Gallery and that kind of thing. If there's pieces that you want to go and seek out and ask for, you know, and, and, and you know, if there's existing pieces, you can get a great Richard Serra for dirt sheep, I'm sure. <laughs> I have a feeling you'd have a little bit of a problem getting a Richard Serra <laughs> through the PTRC, though. <laughs> but then from what I'm hearing, you know, I, I feel like maybe our commission is envisioning something a little bit more contemporary or, um, and then from what I'm hearing, the kids on the bench thing, you know. That was, um, that was, um, I, I think that was the one moment where I kind of looked back at Dave and I went, oh no. Because right. <laughs> yeah. I know that that's not the direction that you all have ever been going in. But if we right. wanted to get the support, the financial support of a lot of people, it sounds like that's what they're no, trying to I, do. I don't think that yeah, that's the case. It was so two nice. people that were kind of speaking together, kind of whispering yeah. together. <laughs> um, the others had, uh, I think, I think, I think generally, I, I think you should look at the PTRC as sort of a, a microcosm of the, of the general public. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that there are people who want that bronze, you know, cute kids slide, sledding down a hill. And then there's people who appreciate more contemporary, um, that, that ask more questions and has a little bit more sort of, um, I guess my question for you all is, I've seen that this group is, is trending towards more contemporary and you have talked a lot about this piece being more for the community. Um, as a gift to the community and giving them kind of what they've said that they want, which there's not a lot of consensus about, but I, I don't think you need to leave your own personal taste behind. Like, you don't have to go by um, all those pieces that are in, in the, those are all pieces by people up in Loveland and they're, they're very accomplished art artists in their own right. But at the same time, those are not cheap. <laughs> They're not the right scale. I mean, I think we're talking about, like, I think you need to develop your own criteria yourselves and, um, and be really thoughtful about it. And I can, I can help you develop that criteria. Maybe we could, we could put together some words and then we tell the PTRC this is what we're going to go looking for and, you know, and then just just go for it. I don't I don't think you need to get their blessing necessarily. Or and maybe one of the ways that we can engage the the public more is have two different ideas of the direction we want to go, right. and involve them early on. Just say, hey, this is these are two examples of what we're going for, and maybe do a I don't know survey in the crier and just get people to weigh in early on before you actually have gone out and selected something, so people feel like they had some. 
some buy-in. I don't know. It's 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 there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Kendall, I need some help. From yeah. The standpoint that I knew it. What's that? I could use some help from you, and that is, I'd like to jump in the water and see as many different arenas as I could of art that might suggest expensive, inexpensive, anywhere, and just be able to sort through for myself mm -hmm. what's out there before I. Okay. Well, that, that would be easy to do. We could do like a little study session. I could put together a presentation. I can, I can show you pieces that are out there that are, um, that are existing that are within a certain kind of budget range is, is what I'm thinking mm -hmm. um, in different materials and different, and then we could have like a little shred and we can kind of have some agree. Uh, I mean, I, we've done this before, but it's always been sort of, um, Artists that we know are local. I mean, do you want to go international? Do you want to go national? Do you want to? I mean, what? I don't. I guess I need some parameters because there's millions of artists and millions of pieces out there. I know what I like, but I can certainly see something I never conceived of. I'm not even really doing it after I see it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess that is a question. Do we want to look at local, or do we want to? I mean, there's lots of Colorado artists. Do we yeah. want to? Or even the do, region. Do we want yeah. to feature those? I think regional, those. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. I think you need to include all the way from Wyoming to New Mexico, at uh -huh. least. Okay. Uh, Utah, or whatever, that little area. Okay. I certainly, yeah. And maybe national. I don't, I don't think we need to go international, but. Uh, okay. I think Western is kind of nice to stay in. Our yeah, way. yeah. I mean, I, sure. I agree. It's nice <clears throat> to think about Colorado artists. We'll right. find it. We'll end up with the with artists the at Loveland, mm -hmm. mostly. Yeah. Right. And so it sounds like everyone wants to just expand a little broader mm -hmm. than that mm -hmm. and see. Well, and then some other criteria points, too. Um, is it um, artwork that... Um, I... I, I um, is it stone? I, I mean, one of the things I heard loud and clear was yeah. connection to connection to the landscape and connection to your history. Yeah. Um, in terms and scale, of, right? And scale. scale so those were the things important. that I heard. And so and I did mention you, stone too. You yeah, know. I think if you're choosing artwork that might be crowd pleasing, I think it would be wise to stay within that. I, I think you know, doing an Eve Klein or a or a <laughs> Joel Shapiro probably won't be a good sell. At this point, but you know, I, I so I'm I'm just think, you know, I I love the work that we first did with James Searles. He's he's a nationally known artist, and he's got you know, I mean, doing a commission from James might be a really cool thing to do. So we could go all the way kind of contemporary with that, or we could go some more kind of more conservative Madeline Weiner, um, you know, that kind of piece that's in front of this uh, the the. Um, Malin's pieces are the pieces that are like the seated figures that are all in white stone that um, kids can play on and sit in and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, they might not have the height though that we're looking no, for. No, yeah, You're, they wouldn't. Could you yeah. help us with that? Maybe just scale and then a couple different. Yeah, I can give you some examples. So we can look at it and see from the different styles and what we're. Right. Yeah, I can I can look I can give you examples and then um, of artists that I know would be able to deliver things and they'll be maybe from a different price range than they they might go all the way to top end to to you know, sort of more reasonable stuff um, and I can put that together for your next meeting if that's what you want or we could schedule a study session if that's um, something that you want to. Am I the only one that loves the cranes? I love those. Those are my favorite, actually. And the ones that them. were the examples? The origami? Yeah. No, I oh, love oh. the origami. But do you remember up in the corner of Happy Canyon and Quincy, the cranes? The oh, yeah. Cranes. Those were nice. I thought those were great, too. I don't yeah. remember those. I don't know those. Yeah. Well, those I don't know. Were, they were Revin. quite a few. Sorry? Revin. Those were Revens. Yeah. Oh, Revan. Okay. Well, and Revan's an artist that uh, I would look at for sure. Um, there's a couple of artists that I've worked with that are, are terrific and do more contemporary work. Um, there's, uh, there's also, um, I'm trying to think of his name and I'm, it's escaping me right now, but I'll have to, I'll put together sort of a dossier of, uh, you know, just sort of a poster of work and I won't even tell you what the artist is or whatever. Maybe, maybe what we can do is just do a charrette and mm -hmm. I'll put together a bunch of things and, and I could put some posters up and you can put 
dots on things that you like and things that you don't or whatever. It, it's really up to you how, what format we use. Um, but it would be fun to get you guys coming up with a set of criteria. That's that's the goal for me. Mm -hmm. Is I can't I can't really do much until I have like okay it has to be more contemporary this type of material this price range and you know mm -hmm. we want it to be regional kind of thing. The origami okay. birds and flat out now. Yeah, it sounds like. Yeah. It, yep. they, I would say that of all the pieces that they, it, they were just not impressed. Uh, they, uh, they, they were right. too small. I think, um, I think that they didn't really understand the connection to, to the community, and they're like, it's origami. They were not as impressed. <laughs> so, yeah. I think flat. it's also the way that they're that they're um, installed on this post and put up, and I think they worried a little bit about about them looking kind of because I've seen the, the life I've seen them in real life and the ones without the posts at all, just the full scale yeah. and the flying and the I mean they're gorgeous, they're yeah. really nice in Santa Fe. But um, and and we can we can keep we them in there. Them I, I mean, I think if this group really likes it, then just keep pushing. They, well, uh, yeah, I think there's other things we could do, but, but to try and find some type of bird or animal, you know, landscape that relates, like it could be there, and turn it into a big sculpture. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's what we decided was one of the criteria. It has to be at least if it's contemporary, be reflective of some type of natural animal or. I love the ones on the stone column. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. The other thing was that they didn't necessarily say stick to animals. They also talked about the wagon that was at one of the entrances. The, the, I guess there was, you know, oh. like things that would hearken to farm life or anything yeah, like that, too, that there. there might be yeah. ways in which we could insert imagery in that's not necessarily wildlife as well, right. which is kind that of was, an interesting thing. Well, that was, I think they were referring to the Sundown. lady with the, the plow. plow. Yeah. Which um, I think one of the least successful pieces at the airport is the farm equipment all lined up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure you would have agreement there. But you know, uh, the um, you know Patrick Merrill works in abstract with with wood and and some other pieces. I mean, there's some artists out there that work in such extraordinary. Um, abstract ways that I, you know, that hearken to things that, and I think that over time they become sort of beautiful pieces that are like almost like found objects that you find in, in the, in the nature. they're not literal, they're more evocative. So um, we can, we can look at some of those pieces too. Did you like the color fields that were at City Park by that couple that was a temporary exhibit there in the old lily? Pads or ponds that were in City Park. I don't think I ever saw that. But it was just a couple of years ago. It was exquisite. I, I'm sorry. I don't get out that much. I have, <laughs> I have teenage. I have teenagers too. So. Um, yeah. No, I, I haven't seen it, but I can look into it. Well, it was a temporary one, but I thought it was exquisite. It certainly didn't have the height, but it had the width. Mm. We can also look at what the Denver Botanic Gardens has been doing with bringing in the different um, sculptures and how they place them in all of their Who's coming. landscapes. Right. Yeah. And so they've had some really, really good ones. I mean, yeah. the Juhulis are great. Oh, yeah. They bought one, but... Um, yeah, that's a little... That, that's probably not... Too enough. delicate and out of but, our... Uh, I, I mean, yeah. the, the mission of the Denver Botanic Gardens, they're extraordinary because they don't... They're curating. Mm -hmm. that, you, mm -hmm. This is a little different. This is... Mm -hmm. You're paying tax dollars, so you can't really curate without having the public. But it, but it's a relatable thing. So if they totally. curated something, we found something that they either had or are going to right. curate. Maybe you know that's an easier delivery back over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Back to whatever. So I think following their lead of how you know who they're selecting maybe um, hmm? to Ooh, show could in be that interesting. Denver. I can talk to Do Lisa they have and see. A permanent exhibit at the Botanic Gardens. The little bit, yeah. They've there's purchased some of these yeah, they'll, in and out. Yeah, purchase a piece. They have mm -hmm. the Chihuly by the main office over there. Mm -hmm. the, they the, um, they have a couple of public art pieces because yeah. they've qualified for public art um, there a couple times. They've done their improvements. So, um, yeah. Uh, but when they're when they're doing those rotating shows, those are um, those are definitely loaned pieces. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we? Um, I kind of came in on the tail end of those cranes up on 
Happy Canyon uh, and Quincy. Um, was there, there were some negative, well, there's always going to be negative feedback, but wasn't there some negative feedback about those? Do you recall? Yeah, someone mentioned if they wanted to live by the mall, they would move down south, something like that. So they said no. <laughs> something about it being, yeah, they didn't like it. If they wanted, oh, if they'd wanted to live by the mall, they would have moved down south. But uh, I liked them a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'll say this again. I've never installed That could be anything. one person, so we don't right. need to worry about it. And it's about always the person right, that hates right. it that says It's the squeaky wheel. It's yeah. not the person that loves it. So um, they also hated the mangled out front. So there was one person who mentioned that there was a horrible piece that's in front of the city hall. So yeah. It yeah. just leaves an empty place in my heart when these pieces on loan go away. Mm -hmm. James Searle was just fabulous every time I go out front of Quincy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, which goes back to what Laura said about the, you know, extreme fundraising effort that went into the yeah. Butterfield. So yeah. I think that we have to have a work group after one of these sessions soon that everyone can attend to see what kind of time people have and what kind of experience they have fundraising. Because and, and that was why that's a big issue. Big. Well, and, and it I really think that impacts there was the some budget. excitement around around the Butterfield. Like somebody saw it and somebody said, "We need this. We here. could have this." It belongs yeah. in Cherry Hills Village, and there was passion behind that. And if you have passion, you can do it. But I don't. I don't know that you guys have seen a sculpture that you feel passionate about. You kind of like right. it, and you're trying to. You know, you, you're sort of trying yeah. to weigh right. we be the because you have to be it. dialing for dollars. Literally, yeah, you I, really I have to push everybody that you know, and it's the community, and it's yeah, a big. Yeah, I think you, know, you all need to come effort. together as a group, and and so if we do do a study session, I'm going to ask you guys to do. It's not going to be just be me. I'm going to ask you guys to do some homework and come to me with things that you guys feel passionate about. Like go out there and search for some sculptures that you love that, you know, and we're going to do it within the parameters of what we've already established that it has a connection to the landscape, yeah. a connection to the village, it, it, that it has some natural um, materials, natural, and it has the scale. And I'm going to have you guys do some homework and come to me uh, with some of the stuff that I have and have you guys see, you know, what you like out there. Um, because I think we did, we were very successful in doing that when you went to Loveland and sought out some sculptures that you liked and we got the amazing sculpture outside. And I think everybody feels really good about that. It has been um, mm -hmm. positively received by all as far as I know. So, um, and that's that's tax dollars at work. So, so you guys paid city funding for that, and that's yay you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that's that's the sensitive process that we have to do. But I think getting passionate about it and feeling like everybody's on board, like yes, this is absolutely the route that we want to go, makes it so much easier to make the case to the PTRC to the community. You know, once you guys are all bought in. It's yeah. an easy case to make. It's yeah. just it's just how you how you um, feel about it that we can tell everybody. We felt really strongly that this is the piece. Is it possible to consider something coming out of the water? Well, that's a good question. I I think putting anything in the water is is expensive. I mean, you have to really dredge deep. I've done some sculptures over at. Yeah, you need like people who are diving to to pour footers and things like that. It's or you'd have to drain it and, and put Emily the Emily has in. a comment. Oh, Emily's gonna say no, hell no. <laughs> I no, I was just going to say it's there's nothing specifically preventing you from doing that. I just think it will really decimate your budget because knowing how much we spent to drain the pond in order to dredge it. Um, and we looked at having divers for separate reasons and we'll be installing some aerators in the pond that we're going to have to have divers uh, this year. It's really, really expensive. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'd encourage you to stick with the land around the pond, especially from the standpoint of PTRC's feedback, wanting something that's really visible and has some scale. Um, 
I think we should be grateful that they are happy with visible and scale <laughs> and just try and put all our money into that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think putting something in the pond would be really, really cool and be a very um, reflective thing, but we should have done that when they were building it. That's yeah. unfortunate that we weren't able to kind of hit that timing correctly. Right. But um, I worked on... Good idea, but it sounds like... There's a golf course that we did for little sculptures, and they were they were amazing little sculptures out, but... I mean, yeah, you have to get out there and dive and drill a hole and concrete, and, and it basically took up most of the budget. It, so the sculptures would have to be smaller by, depending on how much you want to raise. But, um, you know, I think a, a beautiful Pard Morrison would look at great out there, but <laughs> he's the one that does those kind of look, they look like Lego towers. Yes. So the, uh, but that's totally my opinion. But maybe like eight years from now, if we have to dredge this pond again... There might be another I'm opportunity. I'm going to keep this in mind. Because <laughs> yeah. I think a sculpture in the pond would be very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, I just think it'll eat up our budget for this. Particular. I think it's great, though, that One. you all are moving to have better relationship with parks because then you can take advantage of those, you know, those um, creative intersections. Opportunities, yeah. Yeah. I mean, being able to have a good relationship with parks and um, public works is really important for public art because, you know, if they're, if they're, taking out a sidewalk, then, you know, you could figure out a way to intersect that. But um, it's, it's uh, I mean, the, you saw it here with the city, with the, this building, you know, you were able to reserve a spot for it and it's lit and that was all compliments of the public works program. So that was great. My master's yep. thesis was water purpose fountains. Mm -hmm. And what I could look forward to that was ever dredged or drained that we could install something. I think it'd be amazing. Not Bellagio style, but... <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Tyler's every night. Every night. Yeah. No, but you, uh, there's an artist I know um, who's an who's a emerging artist um, named Timo Mung, and he's out of, um, I think he's out of Englewood or something, but he does these beautiful cranes that are kind of stainless steel, but they, they're in flight, and, and they're large. They're quite large, and, and I can see that. I mean, I'll, I'll include him on the stuff, yeah. but it would be their beautiful pieces oh. of birds in flight, and um, they're, they're quite eye-catching, and they're, um, you know, but they raise your eye up so that you're able to kind of s imagine birds flying and that kind of thing. There's there's nothing static about it. Maybe from the right angle, it could look like it's coming out of yeah, the water, absolutely. but it could still be yeah. <laughs> not in the water just to save that money. We were talking, Kristen, yeah, about yeah, how expensive it is to, yeah. I would love to, you, for you guys to do something in the water eventually because it's it's rare that you get that opportunity, but it would definitely have to be when you, yes, <laughs> when you yes. redredge the wetlands. All right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Kendall, that gives us, I think, yeah. okay. more direction. Well, so, so tell me, um, you know, just tell me what you, you want me to do and, and tell me when you want me to do it. I, you know, I'm kind of at your, at your uh, disposal for, for all this. Kendall, when you were talking about giving them homework, would you want them to send you that information before the next meeting or study session? Yeah. So okay. if you tell me when the next is, so it, is this something that we should do is have this study session where we're looking at examples of work that would be, and then we're kind of hone it down to, you know, a, a group of, I mean, it looks like you already did that, but now that we've gotten that feedback, let's, let's further hone it. And I kind of know what you guys like too. So um, keep it in the realm, but, um, and then have you guys do homework and it could literally be links to it and that we send and we pull it up and have reactions to it. But also right. your input too, like this other yeah. artist we don't know of. Or oh, something. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, of course. Sure. I just want you guys to explore and see what's out there. Like do a Google search on, you know, artwork. Been kind of homebound the last few years. So. Yeah, and, and maybe there's been exhibits that you want to look at, or maybe there's, um, you know, uh, exhibits uh, that that you admired that you've seen or something like that. Just, you know, I know you guys get out and look at art um, all the time, so it would be great if you could just um, show me some of the things that have piqued your interest as well. I appreciate what you see out there, though, too. <laughs> I see a lot. Yeah, no, definitely yeah. you see more than we do. But, but um, it's we also, could still look around a little. Yeah. You know, I am not, but just to be clear, I'm not a curator. I, this is, I do process and I do, I mean, I've seen a lot of great sculpture out there, but for, for curating, 
you know, there are groups like Nine Dot Arts and stuff like that. If you tell them what your criteria is, they'll go find you a sculpture. And that's that's not what I'm that's not what I'm doing here. I'm assuming that this is something that's going to have a little more public process and and um, a little more sort of it'll need a little more massaging, is what I'm assuming. Yeah. Well, I think we need to do our homework. <clears throat> I think possibly individually, but but then maybe get together as a, a work session and mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. We can plan for the April 25th what? meeting. I mean, we can do it during the meeting, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. On and April 25th, if True. everyone's available. April 25th is the next meeting yeah. scheduled. Let me see. Well, maybe we shoot for that. Yeah, that's fine with me. Um, would you want, Kendall, would you want stuff like a week ahead of time or how? Oh, I'll send, I'll send all that information to you okay, guys. Yeah, great. I'm, Monday. I can, what I'll do is I will um, send like some instructions um, probably um, in the next week or two uh, and then just have you guys just think about it, just you know, have it, and then send me either links or or send them to Laura and Emily, and we can have them up for um, discussion. But I would love to see the links that you're looking at as well. Like, just um, I just did this in uh, Golden, and it was really fruitful, very fruitful, because it gets people talking. So I think that's the best. And do you have any suggestions for uh, just general Google searches or or any? Look, not really, right? Or any towns that have particularly good art to look oh, at? Oh, that have good collections? Yeah, just to... uh, I would look at the town of Vail. Vale. Vail's, huh. Vail's um, I'm, I, they've got a really interesting collection because of Kent and Vicki Logan um, donating some interesting stuff. But um, I think that they have had, they had a Patrick Doherty um, stick project up there. They've done some more contemporary work. Um, I would say maybe Breckenridge. They've got a little bit of public art. It's hard because public art normally in resort towns tends towards the very, you know. Um, accessible. Yeah, accessible is a good way of putting it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, something that everybody likes and people take selfies with, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But we also did um, a number of sculptures in Beaver Creek that were recent and um, they're they're totally not appropriate for this, but um, they're trying to make their their city a little more young and and that kind of thing. So there's some sculptures in there that may may or may not be of interest. But I can send you some stuff. But normally when I'm I'm looking, I look at collections. Like I I, I look at um, art galleries that I like. Um, like William Havu is one of my favorites, or Robichon or whatever. And I look at the artists that are in their stable. Um, and then, uh, cause most artists who are public artists also do studio work. So it's a little hard to judge cause studio work can be so different from public work. Right. But, um, but there's also a lot of artists that don't do, don't do, um, studio work. So I would just say, look at, look at, um, exhibitions that you've seen or heard about or, um, galleries that you might like. I'm sure there's tons of galleries in Santa Fe and, um, I would say probably also in like Seattle Northwest, there's galleries of, of artists that work in really interesting, interesting mediums. Um, just, you know, to, just go out and explore. Take an hour and just noodle is what I, you know, what I would recommend. How many of our okay. universities have programs with art? Yeah. I just look at collections, you know, like go, go to the Denver Art Museum or, or look at the Denver Art Museum collection and see what, see sculptural pieces. I mean, that's, they've got a De Deborah Butterfield there. They've got right. some really interesting, some really interesting artwork. Um, I haven't been there for ages. I need to go, I'm going this weekend with my kids, but, uh, cause they have spring break, but yeah, it's, uh, I would just say, look at collections that you admire. Sounds good. Yeah. Very good. Um. <laughs> so, Laura, yeah, will you put something out before the next meeting? You are, obviously, because we're missing so many people, too. Yeah, yeah. and I can, I'll can. i put some descriptors True. together for you, Laura, by the end of the week, and then and then we can send it out. Okay, great. All right. Thanks. Good. Okay. We got our work cut out for us. 
Um, hate to pass it to you guys, but you know, a little homework never hurt anybody. No, it's right. the collaboration that it we should be will fun. Be it should be fun. Like enjoy it. Right. Yep. Okay. The next thing on the agenda is uh, what? open studios. And I don't know if you guys need Kendall for any of the rest of the agenda. Oh, no, but I okay, if we can, we're good. Yeah, I don't want to make you respectful of her time. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Have fun, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, so I know I Kristen, half, Kristen has a report for Open Studios. Okay, so I, <clears throat> last week, um, I met with, they, they call themselves the Women of Steel, and it's because they're, I, I know it sounds a little like Wonder Woman-ish, but um, because they're on Steel Street, they're studios. Oh. So they're in Greenwood Village. Um, they have been holding an open studios um, for a number of years. And this past year, or the last year they did it, and I, I don't remember if it was right before COVID or right after, but they involved um, Chris Stevens, who runs the Curtis Center. Um, and they had over a thousand people at their studios. Wow. They almost said it was a little too overwhelming. So they're trying to back up from that and he's going to keep his art on the green or, or um, art in the villages or whatever art on the green what does he call it the green village art on the green he did it last year but he's going to keep that it's going to be right after theirs they're going to do it September 10th and 11th this year two days what they do is um, there is a of course realtor that sponsors golf carts and they drive them to the little studios, which are all pretty close. So I said, we're kind of a different situation over here, but where we have this building. So there could be the potential for us to have either, you know, maybe like a fundraising cocktail reception. If people want to do the open studios, they, they, we show who's doing the studios, you know, maybe hanging somewhere, then they can choose to participate the next day and go meet that artist if they're interested in that form of work or like I, I didn't know how we can be involved so I said kind of give us everything but they would do they they have it dialed in enough where they have postcards and printers and and signs and they have all these things done already so we could just do half or chip in or you know kind of whatever we wanted to do um, to combine them and it would just be open studios in the villages I mean they are our neighbor and it you know would make sense to if we were thinking of doing open studios to kind of roll it into a known venue that that people already go to so it's not just like one or two so um that said they're pretty open but they want to have information for their postcards and their mailings um before may 30th the actual <laughs> um <laughs> Printing and design is going to be in hand by July 12th. They want to know who's doing it and what we're doing and what the times are and, and that sort of thing, if we're doing it at all. Or um, So I don't know how many artists in Cherry Hills want to do this. I guess that would be the first step. Um, and right. to see where those studios are and are they close enough to have, a, I'm sure realtors would love to sponsor some golf carts yeah. to drive to, you know, but. Yeah. Um, and is it Shenley who has a list of who's come Shenley's back already? the one that reached out, yeah. So okay. I don't know that. And so right. I was just listening to them to get their information and to see how we could partner with this if we wanted to. So. Um, would be great. What they don't Could have be, yeah. is a building like this. So, and I said, you know, even if we did artists in tents out here or, you know, food trucks, like, we could all do that. I mean, that that's not, right. um, you don't have to go to, and not everyone wants you in their house. Um, yeah. They did say when they worked with Chris and he, he really marketed it, they felt like people were just poking through their homes a little bit more than the artwork. And I know people would love to get in a lot of these homes and I'm not sure that's, that's our goal. Right, no, I think we're looking for people who actually have studio space. It has nothing to do with their house. Mm -hmm. Like right. it would have to be. But see, oh. like Dukes is attached to his house. Um, mine's in the basement of my house. You know, right. so, no, 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 so exactly. these things so. like so maybe bringing it down here or taking it, or maybe even in the fire department, the hallway, or I don't know it, what we have access to, but maybe um, not have it in the home. This way, there's just one location where everyone can come. And to maybe to it's, see you know, the, you bring uh, a bunch. Sense. You could bring a bunch of pieces, but then if you had a client, you could then take have that person come to your studio i mean i'll yeah, do that yeah. i have people come to my studio but i don't just want a bunch of people i don't know coming right, to my studio because right, right. then it gets right. weird yeah. so so maybe laura can you yeah. ask shenley 
for maybe to give you some feedback on what she knows so far. And then maybe we can put it on the schedule for the next time because it will be tight on time, but that's the mm -hmm. end of April and then mm -hmm. we'd have a month until the end and of so May. And so even if it's not an open studios, but maybe it's an open something here, you yeah. know, in the, so we would change our name of it. So that's what they were saying. What would you want your event to be called? Or, you know, these would just look like sister events on a split postcard is right. what we were talking right. about. Right, but it kind of focuses to, everybody on a particular pair It just gets the same weekend it's for the, Cherry yeah. Hills and Greenwood Village. And right. so if you really wanted to tour art all weekend, you got it. I mean, yeah. that, that's kind of, I think, what they were looking for. Yeah. So. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, it could, it could be interesting because we could do a combo too. Like if a, a couple of people say, oh, I have a separate studio. It's not attached to my house. Right. I'm fine if people come over. Mm -hmm. And then if we have some other people who said, no, I'd rather join mm -hmm. the general thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, so start, just need see, to what, see what the interest is. I guess. Yeah, what the interest is. And, we just yeah. have a note on the timing. Um, so September 10th, we'll be having the car show out here in the parking lot. But oh. September 11th, which is Sunday, would uh -huh. be available. And this year, the car show... Um, is very likely being managed and run by the um, police foundation. That's new. Well, it's not that newly formed, but it's pretty recently formed police foundation. Um, so city staff won't be working that event. So it would more be that this building would be tied up on Saturday, but on Sunday staff would be available and the building. What about would be on available. Friday if we wanted to do a like a little Friday would be the first. No, it'd be the second Friday in September. Um, is it available just in case we thought of something? Uh, off the top of my head, it is. Let me double check and make sure there's nothing on the calendar, but I don't think that there is. I think it's open. I think one day would be fine. I mean, yeah. yeah I think we focus people on the 11th, September 11th. Uh, September 10th and 11th, 11th, yeah. Okay. A rough day in history, but yeah. still. <laughs> True. Um, I think if people are around for the car show, then they're likely to be around for the art show, which could be good. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, so. I'm sorry, I have to go. Don't let your dishwasher run all night. Oh. <laughs> so we'll have to wrap up then, right? Because then right. we won't have a quorum. Right. So why don't we, should we just wrap up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll just wrap up. Okay, thanks, Cameron. Thank okay. Yeah. Thanks, good luck. Um, there's nothing scheduled even in the community calendar for September 9th, that Friday, so that would be available too. Okay. So we could okay. think about that as well. I guess. Okay. All right. All righty. Let's... We got enough work to do, I guess, yeah. right? So, so we just uh, adjourn okay. the meeting? Yep. Okay. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>